Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Adventures of a Real Estate Investor. I'm Susie. And I'm Michael, and we're excited you joined us for this adventure. So today's very special guest, and Michael and I are really, really excited, is Tim Lyons. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's super exciting. And even just to let our listeners know, I had the opportunity to hear Tim speak at Jake and Gino's conference. So that was really cool. It was awesome to see you up there. And I got to like meet your brother during networking. So that was super fun. But beyond that, we reference Brian Briscoe's meetup a lot because we have also chatted with you there. And so there is just like a really great theme. Again, if you haven't gone to Brian Briscoe's meetup, you should definitely try and please reach out to any of us on the podcast because we can guide you to that direction. <laughs> but yes, thank you. Thank you again for being here. Yeah. Well, you know, what I love about that is that, you know, it, real estate can seem so big sometimes, right? The, you know, and overwhelming. But when, you know, being a part of this for the last couple of years, like, it's just really a small community, right? And it seems to get smaller and everybody kind of knows everybody. And it's just a, it's a great community to be a part of. And I'm glad you thought my speech at Jake and Gina went well, because I was super nervous up on that stage. I'll tell you, you know, yeah. the largest uh, crowd I ever spoke to was maybe like 30 people. And then all of a sudden I have like 800 or 900 faces looking at me and it, I was like, whoa, but it was good. That was a great weekend. I can't wait for MM5 it's already scheduled. I'm locked and loaded. So nice. Yeah, that's awesome. No, it was cool. And it was like, even my first, conference like in person so I was like this is me like seeing all the people oh yeah it would have been that makes sense <laughs> that's cool well you know why because I mean listen when, when I when I got started in real estate it was the beginning of COVID yeah right? so I was I was on this journey and then all of a sudden COVID got here so there's no conferences everything's virtual and so when I got to, a chance to see everybody in the hallway you know, at the hotel, I was like hugging everybody, shaking hands. <laughs> like, I feel like I know you so well, you know, but we've only seen each other on Zoom. Right. <laughs> right. So many relationships that we've built you know, over Zoom, you know, virtually. Yes. It was really cool that because like, I feel like you can build when you see people, even if it's virtually, you build like a stronger connection with them versus just like talking to them on the phone and stuff like that. So that is one, you know, silver lining that came out of COVID where you did, people were very familiar with Zoom or virtual platforms where you could chat with people yes. face to face, if you will, in air quotes, but yeah, it's really cool. But Tim, would you mind sharing with our audience, like a little bit more about your background and like why you started investing in real estate? Yeah, I am a New York city firefighter and I work as a lieutenant in the borough of Queens. I've been doing that for about 16 years. And like a lot of firefighters, I had a second career as an emergency room nurse. I like to joke that I was pre-med for about 15 minutes back <laughs> You know, before I joined a fraternity and the wheels fell off for a couple of years there. But anyway, you know, so I, when I became a fireman, I got to the firehouse and almost everybody had a second job. And a lot of guys do stuff in the trades, right? Plumbing, heating, roofing, contracting, you know, tile guys. And I don't have any of those skills. I am totally allergic to a hammer. My whole family is allergic to hammers. You know, I don't know anything <laughs> about that stuff. So I decided to go back to nursing school because there was a couple of guys in my firehouse who were nurses and they had the nice cars in the firehouse parking lot and their wives didn't work and they always had steady side work. So uh, I went back to nursing school while working full time and became a nurse. And what happened was I had a great life, right? I was married, I had my first kid, I was working two jobs that were fulfilling and I had purpose and it just seemed like it was the way it was. But what happened was, you know, I think because of probably lifestyle creep and you could always use more money. So I was trading my time for money and what used to be 40 hours turned into 70, 80, sometimes 90, sometimes a hundred hour weeks, you know, with overtime or picking up shifts. And my retirement accounts were getting contributed to. We went on one or two vacations a year. Everything was good. You know, didn't have any credit card debt. So really to a lot of people on the outside looking in, it was probably like, well, I don't know what Tim's talking about, wanting to be more, do more and have more. He already has everything, you know, that he should have. But when you have that feeling inside of you that you're being trapped, you know, the W-2 grind can certainly wear on you. And, you know, being a firefighter, I work 24-hour shifts. So, you know, that be between commuting and working 24-hour shifts and maybe getting out late, it could be like a 30-hour shift, you know? Um, that's a long time to be away from your loved ones. Yeah. And, you know, when I was coming home, I'd maybe I get home at late at night and the next morning I'm out of the house by 6 a.m. to go to the hospital. So one girl turned into two, which turned into three little girls. 
you know, in my house. And when they, you know, when they're small, they don't say anything, you know, yes, I felt bad that I wasn't around, but my wife started to feel it. I started to feel it. And then when they were able to talk and verbalize, you know, there'd be a lot of tears sometimes, you know, daddy, where are you going? You just got home and now I'm not going to see you again. You know, when, you know, and it was just, it became like overwhelming almost, you know, I was like, you know what, something has to change. Like I, yes, this, this path can continue. Yes. I can make money. Yes. I can support my family. Yes, I have purpose, but there was a couple of boxes that were being checked. And those are some of the most important boxes for myself and my wife, Christina. And that was the family time and, you know, having more control over just my time in general. And there's no real magic bullet. And I didn't know what to really do, but I knew I had to do something. So I'm on the beach, 2019, family vacation, Outer Banks, North Carolina. And I finally opened up a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners know all about this book. And this is a book that I had in my firehouse overnight bag for about a year. And I never opened the book up. I'd heard about it on podcasts. I ordered it on Amazon. I think I order uh, way too many books on Amazon. I have about 50 of them to get through, you know, <laughs> it makes me feel good to like buy the book on Amazon and get it delivered, but then yeah. I used to never get to it. But you know, I, I read the book on the beach and I couldn't put it down. You know, I'm on family vacation. I'm building a sandcastle in one hand and I got the book in the other. And I remember finishing the book and I just, you know, turned to my wife. Christine, I said, babe, I said, I'm going to be a real estate investor. And, you know, she knows I'm sure that she I'm was thrilled. <laughs> yeah. She's like, all right, Sam, whatever, you know, like, sure you are, you know, you know, and she knows though, like she knows that anything I put my mind to anything I'm defiantly committed to, I'm going to make it happen. But she also knew that I knew nothing about real estate investing, that I never did it before, that I never, you know, none of really nobody in my family's done it before. Nobody in her family's done it before. None of our friends really did it. So, you know, I'm sure there was a a healthy dose of skepticism uh, in that response. But, you know, four months later, I'm closing on a three, uh, a three unit rental property. And, you know, when I tell people that they're kind of taken aback by, you know, wait, wait a minute, you read a book on a beach <laughs> in July of 19. And then by November of 19, you're closing on a three unit rental property. And I'm like, yes, you know, and they just wait, wow, how did you do that in four months? And, you know, and that's really the beginning of my real estate journey. I just had to take that action because as you guys are well aware, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners are, you know, education is one piece of the puzzle, right? And I think everybody wants to have that confidence. Everybody wants to have that clarity, but without the inspired action, the next step of taking that inspired action, there's really no results. And if we needed a PhD, every time that we had to make a choice or make a decision or take some sort of action, there would be a lot of indecision in this world. You have to take that action. And that's just what I did. No, I love it. And I love that you actually like took the time to even reflect almost and be like, okay, now like changes have to be made because a lot of people, I mean, and you just hear this right from like stories from others, how they, you know, family still express something and nothing was ever happened. And so I'm like, it just warms my heart, you know, to hear that you're like, no, like just with a little bit more action, you know, in a little bit of more like, please, I just need this much more time in order to get to the place where I can be with you like for a lot of the time is huge. And it even puts like more effort on you. So that's really, really awesome because it's huge to be able to like admit to yourself and then ask of again, like Christina and your little baby girls. Yeah. And I mean, let's face it, like I'm, I'm 39 years old when I was growing up you know, the daddies went out to work, right? They worked wherever, wherever they worked, they went out to work. And these days it's a lot different, right? I mean, people work from home even before COVID, right? If you're in sales, say a lot of the, my friends who work in sales, they work from home and they do a little traveling, but also, you know, fathers used to come home maybe at the work day four or five o'clock in the evening. And that's when they would coach their kids teams or whatever, and like, you know, rinse and repeat, you know, these days, I think dads are especially the dads that I hang around, you know, way more involved in their kids' lives, you know, dropping off at school, picking up at school, you know, you know, just being around more. And I was missing that piece. You know, I was always at work, you know, I was kind of a part of that old school, you know, trade your time for money, go work, go pick up the overtime, you know, do make, just make it happen at all costs, just make it happen. And that's not what I wanted. And, you know, that really speaks to a lot of, you know, what you hear on podcasts in real estate is 
you know, hey, how do you get started in real estate? Well, you got to figure out your why. And that sounds great, right? I'll figure out your why and then hold on to that why. And you're going to just be so successful. We have a Maserati next week. <laughs> but, um, you know, but it's, it's, it, it's something that's actually true, right? If you don't know why you're doing something, if you don't hold it near and dear to your heart, if you don't think about it and almost perseverate on it every day, like, you know, why am I doing this? Why am I going to retire from the hospital making, you know, say $30,000 a year in extra income, you know, to go make $0 a year for the foreseeable future until I can make a new business venture happen. Like, you know, if you don't have a strong why, if you don't have a strong sense of clarity, then you're not going to make that happen, you know? Yeah, no. And that makes a lot of sense because the clarity is a huge part and it's not like you just think about it one time, right? You have to think about it a lot and it can change and evolve also because once you've gotten to like that point or if something's changed in your life, that is totally okay. Like it can evolve, it can grow. And that's the greatest part about all of it. But then how did you get from like the triplex to city side capital? Like, I guess, how'd you get there? And then in between, like, what was the most difficult part about getting there. Oh boy. <laughs> I hope this is part one of the episodes because I can go on and on, but uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so I really, I, when I, when I bought that triplex, I, you know, there was a couple of things. I am very money conscious. I don't like to lose even $5, right? So if I'm at a, if I'm on vacation somewhere, there's a blackjack table or whatever, like I don't even play because if I lost a five or 10 or 20 bucks, I'm going to be upset for the rest of the night, you know? I mean, I think that's a. That's a, that's a part of the way I grew up, you know, from more humble beginnings. And I think money just meant a lot to me. So, so when I bought that triplex, I bought it with a friend and cause I wanted to de-risk, right? I wasn't really sure what I was doing. And I bought a three family because I didn't want to buy just a single family. I'm like, what if that person moves out? Mm. Right. Then I'm going to be stuck with the carrying cost and the, the mortgage, and I have to get somebody in there. It's going to be very stressful, but with the three family, I could have, you know, one, maybe two units vacant and I could still pay the bills. And that made a lot of sense to me. And that made me feel more secure. So I kind of had a little bit of like a multifamily mindset going into it. And I also wanted to be the landlord. I wanted that education. I like, like we talked about in the opening, I am not handy really at all. Like my wife doesn't even want me hanging pictures on the wall. <laughs> and I wanted that th when we bought that house, the first floor unit was going to be vacant. So it was in good shape, but we had to do some painting, well, a lot of painting. We had to take the carpet out. We had to put new LVT flooring in the bedrooms. I mean, all these things I had no idea how to do. I was YouTubing and, re and relying on some of my friends who had the know-how, but I wanted that experience. I wanted to know what it, what it was like. I wanted to be the person renting out that property, you know, putting systems in place, you know, collecting the rent, taking the phone calls. And it sounds crazy, but I really wanted to be like, almost like feeling what it was like to be a real estate investor as opposed to just buying the property and automatically putting it into property management, which I probably should have done, but then I wouldn't have learned as much as I did in that short amount of time. Sure. So, you know, yes. So after a few months I'm cash flowing why, well, I mean, I was cash flowing from day one, but now when we turn that unit, I'm cash flowing pretty nice. My, my friend and I, we have proof of concept. More importantly, my wife, Christina and I, we had proof of concept. This thing works. And, you know, I'm kind of condensing a lot, you know, because when I was turning that first four unit and we also put a new roof and siding on the house, my wife called me one time and she was like, Tim, she's like, I thought this was going to be like a passive type investment. You know, now you're at the firehouse you're at the hospital and now you're at this other house, like all the time, you know, what's happening. And, you know, when I look back, I said, you know what, that was hundred percent right. You know, and I, you know, real estate is not a passive you know, I mean, there's passive investing and then there's active investing and I was doing the active piece mm -hmm. and it provided a great education. However, you know, after a few months, I realized that I'm listening to podcasts all the time. At this point, I had just turned Pandora off my phone. I hadn't listened to one top 40 song and I was, if I had to go to the supermarket for eggs or milk, and it was like a seven minute, you know, round trip, I was taking in seven minutes of and then, and then as I'm walking in the, in the aisles of the supermarket, I have my earbuds in taking yeah. in, you know, more podcasts yeah. and I keep on hearing about multifamily and, you know, to me, multifamily seemed like pie in the sky. It seemed very difficult. Mm 
mm-hmm. something that wasn't for you know Tim the fireman, Tim the ER nurse. It was for a private equity guy, a hedge fund guy, Wall Street. But because it was you know spreadsheets and the, it was a different language, net operating income, cap rates, occupancy, economic loss to lease. You know, and I'm like, what are these guys talking about? But I was very intrigued because they everyone kept on talking about scalability and more units under one roof. And you only have to worry about one roof instead of, you know, whatever, multiple roofs, you know, and I'm saying to myself, man, I should really look into this multifamily thing. The more I looked into it, the more I realized what I didn't know and how hard it was going to be. But then I started hearing about mentorship and coaching and I'm like, wait a minute, this sounds like a scam. I'm not going to pay somebody to tell me what I can learn in a book or listen to a podcast or go to a conference or meet up. That was my scarcity thinking. But then like literally podcast after podcast, regular Joe after regular Joe, we're talking about mentorship and coaching. And, you know, I always joke that being from the New York city area, that I have a healthy dose of skepticism baked directly into my DNA. So I started just doing like hardcore research and contact people on social media. Hey, I saw that you were a part of this coaching program. Just want to know what you, you know, what you thought about it. How does it work? What's your return on investment looking like, you know, and I, I didn't even know what to talk about, but I just needed to hear it from somebody else that they were getting value out of that. And that's what I did. I, I just immediately said to myself and to my wife, Christina, who thought I was a little bit crazy, you know, we got to pay, you know, a lot of money to basically, and the way that I rationalized it, to be honest with you, is that, you know, I, I planned on maybe doing 20 years as a firefighter and then I could retire with a pension, which is something that a lot of, a lot of professions don't have anymore. Less than 10% of jobs in the U S have a pension still. And I was going to go back to school and become a nurse practitioner or a nurse anesthetist, but that was going to require a master's degree and maybe another, I don't know, 60, 80, hundred thousand dollars of, you know, student loans. Yeah. And when I rationalized, like, Hey, listen, like I could build a business in real estate and it's going to cost, you know, a lot of money, uh, cost me 20,000 upfront to, to join a mentorship and a coaching and uh, to join a community of like-minded folks. You know, it, it was almost like a, like a bargain. It was almost a discount. And, you know, that's what I did. I jumped into the mentorship and coaching program and it was literally the, the thing that moved the needle from me, my company, Cityside Capital my family, that that's what the, the impetus that's, that sparked our growth. That's really cool. I want to talk about two things you kind of, you kind of brought up. So the first one is about the difference between active and passive. I think a lot of people, you know, read that purple book by Robert Kiyosaki and they're like, oh, I've got to jump right in. And, you know, a lot of people start off with like single family or, or small, small, you know, multifamily, if you will. And they get into it and then they realize holy crap, this is a lot of work and I'm, I'm taking up more time that I don't have. Right. And so from that, I just want to say, you know, if, if you're new, if you're listening to this and you're, and you're starting out in real estate investing, like take the time to get fully educated on the active and passive side. Cause like what Tim was talking about, like, you know, turning units and spending so much time there, it is very, very active. I mean, so if you're looking for a more passive vehicle, there are other th- options out there, you know, like multifamily syndications and things like that, where you can basically bring capital to a deal and let the operators kind of handle everything and sit on the sidelines and, and just collect, collect a check. So educate yourself on what side of real estate investing you want to be on. Number one is what I want to say, Tim. And then number two, mentorship. For people who are out there who are just getting started as well, and they're interested in mentorship, like what you said, you know, I mean, multifamily is, is like large multifamily is very, it can be very challenging. It's, it's simple, but it's not easy. Right. And what I mean by that is like, it takes a lot of work to get started and by, you know, finding yourself a mentorship program or an organic mentor as well, you mm-hmm. can really accelerate your growth in that way. So I am a big, big proponent of either finding an organic mentor or, you know, being a mentorship program, like for Susie and I, like we had an organic mentor, which helped us get started, but then we realized, okay, we're missing this piece of our business. You know, we wanted to really accelerate our capital raising side of it. And so we joined a specific mastermind for capital raising, right? So like, that's also huge. And, and I'm v- very big proponent of that. And like, as you can, as you can attest to, like you said, that moved your needle that really moved the needle forward. And you now joined a group, a community 
from that point now, Tim, like what have you done since then and since joining that community? I want to hear the rest of the story now. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, th that's a great point. You know, there's a billion ways to make money in real estate and, you know, getting really clear just to stack on top of what you said about being active or being passive. You know, do you want to make it a business? Then you want to be involved and you want to make decisions. Active is the way to go. And that's there's, there's Burr method is, you know, fix and flips. I mean, there's so many ways to do it, right? If you want to be passive though. And this is where I think people need to get clear on their why and, you know, what are we, what are we doing here? The passive side can be so super powerful and I'm a passive investor and I'm an active investor. So yeah, it's just super powerful stuff. As far as coaching mentorship, I am a super proponent of mentorship and coaching when I never thought I'd say that two years ago, I thought, you know, if, if, if I could see myself now, I'd just probably curl up in a bowl, um, <laughs> you know, so. So now I join this community, right? It's March 1st, literally March 1st of 2020. And this thing called COVID-19 is like in Italy and it's in Europe and it's in China. And we're like, what is, you know, what's going on? Like, this is weird, you know, whatever. And I come out of pocket, I made 20 grand. I'm in this, I'm in this brand new program. And as I told you, I'm super cheap. So I'm like, I am, my pencils are sharpened. My notebook is out and like, I am going to be on every call. I'm going to be going through these modules and education. Like I'm a hundred percent in, and I was going to work every minute that my two older girls were in school and my wife was going to take care of the, the baby and his whole plan. And guess what? Three weeks later, the economy is shut down. We're hashtag flatten the curve, right? Two weeks. And you know, all of a sudden I'm instead of doing, you know, modules for multifamily, I'm doing Google classroom and trying to like strap my kids into the seat and be like, you know, hop on your zoom call, baby, you know, like, you know, for a, uh, a kindergartner and a, for, and, a, and a second grader. That was awesome. I also, I work in a very poor neighborhood in New York city, which was almost like labeled by the, by the national news as like the epicenter of COVID in the United States. And, you know, we, we were doing like CPR on people with COVID mm. for 24 hours straight. Every time I would get back in the truck after doing CPR and I would, we have a little computer and I would, hit, you know, make ourselves available for the next run. Like immediately another run would come in for CPR and nobody was making it. You know, usually we can get people back sometimes. And whether they were 30 or 90, it didn't matter. People were not making it. And there was just bodies literally stacking up outside the hospitals and these refrigerated trucks. We had brand new, a brand new baby at home, my third little girl, Avery. And, you know, we didn't know a lot about COVID and now, you know, now like what I'm thinking, right? I have our economy shut down. My kids are at home. I just paid 20 grand for a coaching program that I'm not even really doing right now because it's crazy. And now we don't know about COVID. So I get home from a shift and my wife's like, you know, we need to talk. Like, we don't know anything about this virus. You just were doing CPR for 24 hours. You know, should we just like make a place for you in the basement and or keep you out in the garage? Like, what are we doing here? You know? And I, you know, because we didn't have a lot of information, I said, yeah, I'm like, I, I need to get out of here. You know, I don't want to expose you guys. So I ended up moving into my mother-in-law's house. She moved into my house okay. and for eight almost nine weeks, I was, wow. you know, quarantined. And that's really what sparked my growth in multifamily. This is a long story to tell you how I really, really powered through. And for eight, nine weeks, I had no physical contact with my girls. And I just woke up super early, 5 a.m. every morning, went to bed at midnight, and I powered through material. I got on every Zoom call. I networked like crazy. I started calling lenders and brokers and underwriting deals and hopping on, you know, coaching calls. And I think, you know, that really helped me mentally, right. To be super focused on something while going through something, you know, being away from my, but really that kind of that, that to me made multifamily real, right. Underwriting deals, making offers, talking with people in my network. I mean, people thought I was crazy. Like the economy shut down, the stock market just lost 35%. And I'm like, Hey, I'm doing real estate. You know, and they're like, I thought you were a fireman, dude. What are you doing? Like, you know, you know, so 
But I think all of that together really kind of got people interested in what I was doing. And that's how I've been able to grow so quickly is that people were watching my journey. I also, you know, I got a little more active on social media and I just started telling people what I was doing, you know, and, and, you know, there's certain things that, you know, people want to talk about and real estate seems to be one of them, you know, and a lot of people who aren't in real estate are intrigued by somebody who is doing real estate. So, so that's really like how we got started through the program that I, I was uh, being coached in. I was given a, uh, the opportunity of a lifetime to join my coach, my direct coach in uh, his 43 unit uh, syndication. And he basically gave me a behind the scenes look on how syndication worked. And when I joined the community, I really thought I was going to do like a 10 unit and or 20 unit, but with my brother and my dad, maybe a couple of friends, I wasn't even really clear what syndication was. And after that, after being able to be a part of a syndication and then right at the end before we, you know, getting ready to close, you know, my coach was like, Hey, do you think you'd raise any money? You want to give it a shot? And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, I've never raised money before in my life, you know, but yeah, I'll give it a shot. And we ended up raising, uh, $150,000 and I didn't think I could raise $150, but you know, right then and there is where it kind of crystallized for, for me that I really like syndication. I really like, you know, going bigger, getting bigger buildings having that scalability, offering a investment vehicle to my friends and family that they're not going to see anywhere else, you know, and that's how my capital raising journey kind of got started. Oh, I love it. And I mean, there's just so much to that. I mean, cause a lot of people, right? Like one, like even being separated from your family is huge, but a lot of people during that time would have like done the opposite, you know, like they would have panicked and just been like, okay, like, I'm just going to like kind of dwell on this situation. And you were like, nope, this is what we got to do. <laughs> no, which is right. very powerful. But I am curious, like now, because I know you've raised or you raised quite a bit of money now. Have you brought a lot of like the people that you worked with at the hospital and like the other firefighters into your investments? Cause I know it would be huge to be able to like transform their lives as well, to be able to not have to work, you know, 60, 80, 90 hours a week. Yeah. So that's a great question because of like the unique, the unique situation that I was in being in a hospital setting. Obviously there's some high earners in a hospital, right? You have doctors, you have advanced practice providers, whatever nurses, you know, I have, I was in a, I was in a pretty good spot to talk, to tell people what I was doing. And then when I was like, Hey, I'm resigning. They're like, what, you know, you know, you're, you're resigning. What are you talking about? I'm like, well, I started a real estate business and they're like, oh my God, like, let's, let's have coffee. Let's chat, you know? And then obviously the guys in the firehouse are way more skeptical. You ever <laughs> want to meet. <laughs> If you ever want to meet a, a very funny group of people, just walk into your local firehouse. Right. So, I mean, still to this day, they call me Lieutenant Madoff, right. For Bernie Madoff, they'll be like, Hey, <laughs> hey yeah, I'm a Lieutenant. So the, you know, the, the nickname for a Lieutenant is Lou. So they'll go, Hey, Hey, Hey Lou, how's your Ponzi scheme going? How's your, you know, how's your, you know, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, stop, oh. come on. But then separately, they'll text me, Hey, I want to know all about this. How can I get yeah. involved? You know, we got some money at this and that, the other thing, you know, so we've been able to help a lot of people understand, you know, what it is that city side capital does, what does passive investing mean? How does it work? How does it benefit you? You know, what does it do for your finances? What does it do for your tax situation? And by providing that value and that education. You know, we've really been able to scale our business pretty quickly and, and, you know, provide opportunities for people that they wouldn't have other, uh, otherwise known about. And I think that's what really gets me out of bed in the morning is I love talking about this stuff. I love real estate. I love passive investing and, it, and I'm, I'm super passionate about it. So, and plus I get to work from home now, you know, um, <laughs> which sometimes is good. And sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I could go to an office somewhere, but. So yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing now. No, and I, what's cool though, is that like all three of those professions, like if you look at them, you know, a little bit higher up, like you're all helping a community. It's just like different communities, you know? So there's actually a lot of parallels to 
like being a firefighter, being a nurse, and then being a real estate investor, like if you're in it to impact the community, whether that is like the apartment community or the direct community, you know, that you serve or the people who are just at the hospital, like you help and impact people, whether you like see it that way or not. So it's almost like, it makes a lot of sense actually from going from those two into real estate investing. I mean, that's how I see it, right? If like you have a true passion for real estate investing, like for me, that is like having a true passion for serving another community because like we don't go, or most of us don't go into this, you know, just to make a whole lot of money and leave, you know, like there's a lot more that goes into it. And like having that huge heart to be able to spend a little more time to learn something new where you can serve more people is huge. And so I really like too that you've even like brought other like previous colleagues into it because it's just another way that they can, you know, directly impact a community as well. Like, yes, it's through you, but they're still helping, right? Because without residents and really without capital, we don't get very far. <laughs> so all the True. people who are involved are also impacting. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look, you know, I think people in general, and when I say people in general, I'm going to say Tim Lyons, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, my money mindset is not what my money mindset is today. Yeah. You know, maybe a couple of years ago, I wanted, I had a picture of sitting on a beach, you know, sipping a tropical drink, you know, and not having to go to work. And that was like my ideal day, mm -hmm. but, you know, being surrounded by entrepreneurs and very successful people, you know, you very quickly learn that like, yeah, that would be cool for about two weeks or two months, but then you're back to the, the purpose. And if you don't have purpose, you don't really have a life. Right. And, you know, if there's no impact in what you do in your daily activities and, you know, that's when like, you know, bad stuff can happen and you get off track. You know, I mean, what, I'm, one of my mentors, Gino Barbro, who you guys know, you know, he talks about it all the time. Like he's a super successful guy, multiple streams of income. He could literally sit on the beach and do nothing all day, but he is crushing it because he has the impact about education and, and helping other entrepreneurs launch their businesses that gives him fulfillment and purpose. And I love that. And I never understood that until I started to do what I'm doing now. And now, you know, um, I can totally see how you can become super successful and have a nice bank account or whatever it is. And you still want to have that impact. You still want to be on that journey. And that's what is so fascinating to me about, you know, this real estate community that we've joined, you know, so many successful people and, you know, they're just all about impact and they're all about a rising, uh, tide will lift all the boats. Right. And I, that's what I love. It's just a giving community. And that's what I, that's what I want to continue to do for others. Yeah. Cause even like. Cause we all like Michael and I also passively invest and like, that's our goal, right? We all want to be able to passively invest more. So it's not like active investing is the way to go for everyone. Cause that's not even it for us, right? Like we also want to be able to do more passive investing in the future, but like when you can passively invest and just not have to worry, cause that's really what the thing is, right? Not having to worry. Like if you lose hours at your traditional nine to five, like what happens next? Like it just gives you an opportunity to like have a glimpse into that future to be like, okay, well now what have I been wanting to do that I haven't been able to do? And that is different things for a lot of different people. And that's totally okay. But it's like, you almost have the opportunity to have like a proactive mindset instead of a reactive mindset. And so like, that's mm -hmm. even the beauty of like how, what I love about bringing other past investors into this space, because like that in itself is like a very great gift to be able to have. You know, as an example, what you just said, a good friend of mine is a physician and during COVID, uh, well, he's now an investor, but during COVID his practice, you know, shut down. There was not a lot of like revenue being generated out of the practice and you know, before COVID, obviously everybody knows doctors tend to make a good salary, right? Good money, especially here in the United States. And, you know, but all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, like this, this, this thing that came out of nowhere just shut me down, you know, and I need to figure out how to have multiple streams of income, which is almost like a cliche or, you know, sounds like pie in the sky, but then when you, when you realize that it's really not, and it's very attainable for a lot of people, you know, and it's not overnight success. You don't just, you know, there's no magic bullet, you know, one day you're here and the next day you're there, 
but over time you start taking these, you know, defined actions and, you know, you can build up those streams of income. And that is what's so powerful about real estate. That's what's so powerful about aligning yourself with operators who are experienced, you know, doing the thing that you want to do, but maybe you don't have time for. And then, you know, being a part of something bigger, having an impact on the community, taking, you know, maybe a dilapidated building and making it super nice, improving the community, improving people's, you know, standard of living. So there's just like a lot to it, but. No, a hundred percent. And it, it does truly make a world of a difference. Yeah. Well, Tim, we love to chat with you all day because this has been such a pleasure just learning about your experience. And I'm sure and all, all of everything else as well. Like I'm sure our listeners out there have gained quite a bit of information from you. So this is really awesome. It, it's very inspirational. However, it does take us to the Adventures 4. These are four exploratory questions we ask all of our guests. So the first question we have for you, Tim, is where is one place you, place you wish to travel to and why? I'm going to make it real simple. I'm going to come to the uh, UK and visit Mike and Susie. <laughs> we'll be here until December. Right. <laughs> we'll be here for another year. So That's very kind of you. December 16th of next year is next year. Last day, that so. is true. <laughs> yeah, time, we got a time limit on that. <laughs> <laughs> so the second question is, what is the number one thing on your bucket list and how are you leveraging real estate investing to achieve it? You know, something I talk about with uh, my brother, who's also my business partner, a lot and with our investors is not only evaluating ROI, return on investment, but evaluating the return on your time invested. And, you know, my bucket list is to be a great father to my little girls. I want to coach their teams. I want to go have lunch with them at school. And I think, you know, having, you know, extra money and multiple streams of income and it just gives you optionality. So my bucket list is just to be a good dad by having the optionality to do so. I love it. I do too. That's really cool. So the third question is, what is one piece of advice for someone who wants to start passively investing in real estate? You know, I would say, you know, listen, education, you know, I, again, Gino, one of our, you know, mentors says education times action leads to your success or your results, right? I would just say, just get educated, start listening to podcasts, start like, you know, like this one. Start reading some books, start, you know, getting around people who are doing the thing that you want to do and then take action because it is a super powerful vehicle, but listen, like, just like anything else, you know, you want to be aligned with good people that are going to be on, you know, on your team for a long time. And, you know, just because somebody has a deal doesn't mean it's a good deal. So, you know, you want to have some due diligence. You want to have uh, that background to make a good informed decision. I do too. So the fourth question and final question is, if you had unlimited resources available to you, how would you leave an impact? Oh, man. You know, I never thought, I, I never had enough money to like really like donate to a lot of charities, but there's a lot of charities I'm always like thinking about and, you know, and then there's a couple of them that, you know, are near and dear to my heart and I would love to be able to support them in one way or the other. And these include childhood cancer. My brother is a uh, cancer survivor. You know, Alzheimer's, my mom has Alzheimer's, you know, anything with first responders and military. I mean, those people are just like number one in my heart and, you know, the list goes on and on, but I'd love to be able to, you know, support charities like that going forward. No, that's wonderful. And it is like, you literally leave one of the biggest impacts that way. So thank you. So before we end the show, Tim, would you mind sharing with our adventurous family, how they can find out more about you and Cityside Capital? Sure. So I just started a new podcast. It's called the Passive Income Brothers Podcast with my brother. Uh, so check that out on any of the, uh, you know, pod podcast platforms. And then just head over to the website, citysidecap.com. Yeah. And Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. It is always a pleasure. Hopefully Michael and I can see you at a real estate event before. MM5. Yeah, but, yeah, right. But if not, thank you again. Yep. See you guys soon. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So until next time, explore more adventure awaits. Woo!